you don't take care of it, you get to buy what's in this box. To the tune of several thousand dollars. Hmm. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk a little bit about transmission cooling. And it's something that the factory has changed over the years. They used to always put a nice external cooler. You can go about this many different ways. And one of the ways that GM used to do it was an internal cooler in the radiator, then an external cooler. Uh, then they went to just the internal cooler in the radiator, and they did away with the external cooler they started running them hotter now they run a subpar external cooler and it's uh, controlled by a thermostat and Ford does similar things uh, some of the Fords have a thermostat in the valve body some of them have it external some of them have nothing and they control it with coolant flow to the cooler which is mounted underneath the truck and I tell you I just don't like the way they're doing this anymore. I see a lot more transmission failures and they're usually due to temp issues and it's overheating of the transmission. Um, that's what I ended up having to replace that one I showed you in the box at the opener, but that's something that we can alleviate by eliminating the cooler and also putting an external cooler on. Um, I always put an external cooler no matter what if I'm towing, if I'm not towing, uh, you can see even here on this little Monte Carlo, I put an external cooler and it's not my cooler of choice, but it was kind of compact in here space wise. Um, Ford does something a little different and it's, this one makes zero sense at all. So we're going to slide underneath this thing and look at this Ford. That is the cooler on the new 10R80s. And all it has is coolant lines running into it. Those coolant lines run up to, let's see if we can find it. Got this thing all apart. This valve right here, and that valve controls the coolant flow down to the cooler. And that's the only way it cools it is via that valve. The 10 r 80s on the trucks do not have a thermostat in them. It is only that cooler and the valve that controls the coolant to it. Uh, Really what we're focused on, a 6L80, and it's flaws, I guess you'd call it. And that flaw would be that thermostat, and I'll give you a little diagram of how that works and all that later in the video, but we're going to talk about that. Hope you guys learn a little something. Here's one we've seen already. It's a 2014 Chevy Silverado, and... This guy owns his own uh, own company, does construction work, a lot of remodel stuff, and he hauls a pretty good sized trailer with it, but not all the time. It had some lockup issues. We put a torque converter in it, fixed that, but the transmission runs hotter than I'd like to see. And Here's something to pay attention while you got a vehicle in. There is lots of times bird nests, things of that sort, living in between your radiator. I'm just going to take the air blower here in a second and blow all that out. When you do this part, pull it out some. It's going to be messy. Here's how that factory thermostat works. Hot fluid comes out of the transmission, and when it's closed, the fluid flows directly back into the transmission. This is what happens if it sticks as well, which will cook your transmission. Once the thermostat opens, if it's working, it flows out of the transmission and then goes out to the transmission cooler, gets cooled, then returns back to the transmission. 
Here's a cutaway of the thermostat bypass installed. This allows the fluid to flow to the cooler and back to the transmission without ever bypassing because of this plug and O-ring. Here's that thermostat bypass kit and that's on the side of the transmission underneath where the cooler lines exit. Should be pretty straightforward. You just pop that off and remove the guts, put these guts in it. I'll go through that in a few. And then here's the cooler I like to put in. These stack plate style coolers are really efficient. They do a really good job. They have the style that are just a, a tube and fin and they work okay. They don't cool as well. They flow better, but they don't cool as well. And this style here works more like an actual radiator and every bit of fluid that goes into this thing is gonna get cooled. So that's my preference. There's the cooler installed right there behind the grill and it's not touching the condenser so it's got a nice clear airflow path. I kind of like to do them that way so neither the condenser heats the transmission cooler or vice versa. Got everything run. I just tapped into this line right here and I've got it run up and through all the plastics underneath here. Now we're going to move on to the thermostat, which on a four wheel drive is a little harder, but it is that component right there where you see that bolt. You'll undo that bolt to 13 millimeter, then Undo that bolt where the lines go in and hook to it, which is a 10 millimeter. Pretty easy. And once you get it out, I'll show you how to take it apart. Here we are back in the clean room, cleaning quotations, and I'm going to disassemble this thermostat valve for that 6L80. Maybe. There it is. Needed a pick. All right. There's that. So it brings out. So now. This thing's gonna cooperate and come out. Maybe. Oh, look at that. It's coming out. Okay. So when you pull this apart, just lay it out the way it came out of there. Pretty much the parts will kind of make sense how they come out of there. So that is it. There's all the components you can see, and that booger is empty in there. It's just an empty shell. So what it does is it just stops the flow, and it just goes in, in a circle, basically. So it comes out of the transmission, goes right back in the transmission, which is not good. If it ever sticks, if it ever hangs, you'll cook it in a heartbeat. So I'm going to squirt this down and clean it up. Alright, so we've got the parts laid out here. And it's pretty simple. You've got three O-rings. You've got a small valve here. O-ring goes on there. And I'm going to use some trans gel to go on here. Just so nothing comes apart. And everything slides together good. You don't have to do this, but... That's my preference. Then the ball oops, is slippery. Goes on top of that. We're going to glue it on there with some assembly glue. So 
when it goes down in there, it looks like that. You can see that assembly goo in there. Then we go in here with the spring. And I'll glue the spring into this end, which is the cap. But before I do that, it has two O-rings that go on it. And I've seen other designs that only have one O-ring. I kind of like this. It's got two. So it'll seal up nice. Just a little assurance. Okay. We'll throw some lube on this spring so it doesn't fall out. And put a little bit around these O-rings. A little bit on his sleeve. So it'll all drop together nicely. Boom. And then put the snap ring back in. And that is all there is to this. And why GM has decided they want to put a thermostat in there is all due to fuel economy standards. And I can tell you, thicker fluid affects the fuel economy quite a bit. We took a trip up to Tennessee, and it was cold, 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 and the uh, my fuel economy dropped by almost two miles to the gallon, and my transmission was only running about a hundred degrees, sometimes even less. So there it is. She's all back together, and you can take some air and blow through there. And it just blows straight from this fitting through here, from this fitting through here. It's just a straight bypass of that thermostat. So it flows fluid all the time. In Texas, we get maybe a week of super cold weather. You need to worry about that. And in that aspect, us Texans are a little soft because we don't go anywhere during that time. Hopefully this was helpful to somebody and their transmission will live a little bit longer. The biggest key to keeping a vehicle on the road is maintenance. So if you'll maintain your vehicle, drop the pan on that transmission uh, anywhere from 30 to 50,000 miles. Don't go that recommended interval of never or 100,000 miles or whatever they're telling you now. Drop the pan, throw a filter in, replace five to seven quarts of fluid every 30 to 50,000 miles. Tighten it up if you're, uh, if you're towing with it and keep that thing cool. Maintenance is the key to keeping a vehicle alive.